Kathleen, thank you for sitting down with us. Um, you have just been nominated by Mayor Ed Murray to be Seattle's next police chief. Um, you said that you were prepared for a difficult fight with the police unions. What is that difficult fight? Well, actually, I didn't characterize it as a difficult fight. I think somebody asked me if I was prepared for a difficult fight. I'm prepared to have a relationship with the police unions, and I hope that it can be to our mutual advantage. Um, I don't hesitate to be a strong manager when I have to be, um, but I prefer a relationship of mutual trust and communication and uh, trying to come to consensus on things. You know, I recognize that that always, you know, won't always be the case, that we'll have times when we're at odds over issues, but I think that uh, we should handle those situations in a respectful way as well. What are your specific concerns with the police unions, in particular the Seattle Police Officers Guild? Well, I met with two of the union representatives earlier today, both the, the, um, the guild and uh, the one representing the, the more senior officers. And uh, you know, again, we all agreed to start on the right, with the right tone to wipe the slate clean. And uh, you know, that did, I, I was able to uh, do that in Boston, in a very, starting in a very contentious place. We were able to restore labor management relations uh, to a point where they were um, advantageous to both the city uh, and to the unions. So uh, you know, I'm hoping that that will be the case here. I'm the eternal optimist, but you know, I'm not naive enough to think that we won't have issues from time to time. And what issues specifically are you concerned will come up based on their past history? Well, you know, they have new leadership now, so I think it's difficult to say. Um, you know, I think the uh, implementation of the consent decree is a big challenge for everybody. Um, and I think that, but I think if, if they feel that they're getting the right direction and the right training and development, and you know, we have to back them up when they do the right thing. You know, I, as I said earlier, I have no tolerance whatsoever for arrogance or rogue cops. Um, and I think uh, most good cops would agree with me uh, about that. So I want to support the good people in the organization and give them an opportunity to do their jobs and do their jobs right. And, and when they do that, then and if they make honest mistakes, then we need to support them when they make honest mistakes. But I have no trouble holding them accountable uh, when they misbehave or act in an arrogant way or they breach public trust. And when, if they do that, what is your strategy for reining them in and essentially cutting off their attempt to influence the culture of the police department? Well, you know, my, my uh, strategy is to be fair and honest, and you know, I would expect them to be fair and honest and come halfway. Uh, so, and, and again, I think we're starting in a good place, um, and I hope we remain in a good place. But you know, I know that management has its role to play, and union leadership will have their roles to play. Now, let me give you an example. They recently filed an unfair labor practice, uh, you know, um, in hopes of um, um, their, their protest to the chief bringing in outsiders. Well, realistically, I know that they're just, they're representing their membership, and you know, I don't I don't fault them for that at all, you know. But at the same time, you know, I know that I'll probably need a combination of insiders and outsiders for my new team. So I'll move full speed ahead and let them move full speed ahead. I, I don't disrespect them. I'm not, you know, angry that they've done that. Um, you know, they, they have their role to play. I have my role to play. I think that some people might find that a little bit discouraging, given that we've heard similar language from people who were in your position before. And they said, you know, we're going to start with a clean slate and we're going to negotiate in good faith. But what we've seen consistently is chiefs who are getting steamrolled while we have a dis discipline process that is widely regarded as, you know, essentially a Byzantine system for exonerating officers of wrongdoing, while the unions have persistently created this culture of opposing reform, um, joking about shooting at African American leaders in their newspaper, um, criticizing the race and social justice initiative. Um, how do you think that you can essentially win the charisma argument culturally within the police department and find more allegiance among the police officers to your way of thinking than to their very charismatic and toxic culture? Well, first of all, I think it's really important to lead by example. And, uh, and, and I hope that, uh, that a critical mass of people will fall in behind me if I lead by example. I mean, I, I do not t 
tolerate arrogance or bigotry. Um, you know, I think that uh, you know, policing is a service, and, and we need to provide service out there to people in need, people representing you know, very different perspectives and very different cultures, and, and we need to be respectful at all times. Um, I'll be respectful at all times, and I expect the police officers in Seattle to be respectful at all times. And if they're not, I'll hold them accountable for not being respectful. So I think, um, you know, I think leading by example is important. And I had to make some pretty big, uh, sort of difficult decisions in Boston. We had a horrible tragedy in Boston where a young woman was killed in the aftermath of, um, of uh, the Red Sox victory back in 2004. And for the first time in the history of the organization, um, First of all, I stood up within 24 hours and took responsibility for what happened, but I also um, commissioned a completely independent uh, group to come in and study what happened there. And, and I asked a, a very credible uh, uh, former U.S. attorney to head that group. He established a panel of national experts, and I said, we'll go where the truth takes us. You know, we have to be open and transparent, and we have to be honest with people. And and and. Much to my surprise, people thought that the unions in Boston would be appalled by that, but they fell in behind me and felt that was the right thing to do. And I think to some, exchange, to some extent, you know, we were able to move the culture a bit in that instance. I mean, out of all bad comes some good. And I think we were able to move the department forward in a, in a positive way because police officers recognize the importance of taking that position and being more transparent. So again, I think it's all leading by example. What role, if any, do you think the chief has in negotiating the new contracts with the Seattle Police Officers Guild? Well, in Boston, technically, the police co uh, commissioner had no role whatsoever uh, it, from, a, from a technical perspective. But um, because I established good, strong lines of communications with the union, you know, I often um, inserted myself in the discussions when I thought it could be helpful. You know, I remember sitting at long bargaining sessions until the sun came up on a few mornings. Um, when I thought that I could be helpful in a constructive way. So I think it should take its, you know, its ordinary legal process, but if people involved on, on one side or both sides think that I can help in a constructive way, then I'm happy to uh, engage in the conversation. Are there any changes that you think need to be made to officers' contract in this next round of negotiations? I really need to look at the, the, uh, the existing contract to a greater extent. You know, as, I was, as I did my homework in preparation for this, you know, I had to rely mostly on um, information from outside the organization and news reports and, and also information that was provided by the selection committee, but I didn't feel comfortable calling the, the union or the leadership at the SPD to ask for, for information. So I still have a considerable amount of homework to do. When you did do that homework, what did you think, and I know you said the, there's a clean slate, but what did you think were the greatest problems with the police department and specifically the unions? Um, well, the greatest problem is certainly the behaviors that led to the consent decree. Uh, you know, obviously, um, you know, we can't ignore uh, those the incidents that led to the establishment of the consent decree. Um, and uh, so, you know, I think we have a great roadmap right now in that consent decree, um, but we're not going to just tick boxes. You know, we, we need to realize substantive change. So I think we need to... Uh, you know, go through every paragraph of that agreement to ensure that not only we're accomplishing what the language says, but that we're, we're realizing in spirit the intention of the, the agreement. So, sorry, I hope I didn't get off track there, but, you know, I think that, I think my greatest concern is the behavior, the type of attitudes that led to the consent decree, and uh, I think we have a good roadmap for addressing that going forward. Those incidents don't happen in a vacuum. Though I mean, we've had problems with not only officers being able to engage in misconduct, but also that they enjoy the comfort of a police culture that seems to encourage misconduct and say that, that the unions and upper ranks will circle their wagons around officers who engage in misconduct. Do you have any concerns about that culture and how the union has created it? No. I've, well, I've never circled wagons in, in any instance um, around, uh, around wrongdoing. And, you know, I would hope that uh, I can work uh, effectively with these union leaderships, uh, leaders, is, uh, with this union leadership. You know, bottom line is, um, 
you know, we need to address these things head on. It, you know, if there are cultural issues, then we need to, to address them head on. It's, it's going to be important for me to spend a good 30, 60, 90 days inside the organization, traveling from facility to facility, listening carefully to people who are working out in the front lines so that I can do my own assessment of the culture um, rather than basing my assessment on what I've read to date. So I'm not dodging the question, but if you want to come back and ask me in 30, 60, 90 days, I'd be happy to, uh, to tell you what my impressions are. I probably will. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.